Good afternoon, everyone. Today we're going to do a video on calculating the percentages of numbers, and we're using number lines to kind of help build the visual of these ideas. So, if we look at our first example, where I tell you that 60% of 120 is going to be um, our number x that we're trying to find, then what I propose is to draw out a number line. We're going to um, build a visual for what this is going to stand for. And so, if we have 6% of 120 being equal to x, then x is going to be less than 120. Right, because it's less than 100% of 120, so it has to be lesser in value than 120. So if we put 120 at the end of our number line, and of course zero at the very beginning, we can kind of estimate where the answer should lie, just roughly. 60% is greater than 50%, clearly. And 50% is one half. And so we know that 50% is around here, and so 60% we can estimate to be around this part. Okay. Now, 50% of 120 is pretty easy, right? That's one half of 120, which is clearly 60. Okay. And so we know that 60% is going to be a little bit more than 60. Okay. Now we can think, well, there are many different ways to do this. We can think of 60% as 50%. So that we can break down 60% into 50% plus 10%. That would be one way. And so if 50% of 120 being half of 120 is 60, then 10% of 120, that's readily available to us because 10% of any number ending in zero, we simply take off the zero at the end, and so we get a value of 12. And so if 60% is the sum of 50% plus the 10%, then, sorry, 60% of 120 is simply 60 plus 12, which is equal to 72. Okay. Now, this is only one way, but that definitely makes sense because if 60 is here on our number line and 120 is all the way over there, then 72 certainly makes sense to be around here. Okay? Around here on our number line. Another quick and easy way is to convert to a decimal. So, convert to a decimal and multiply. Okay, so if we convert 60% to a decimal, 60% as a decimal is 0 0.6. 0 0.6, right? And so then if we multiply by 120, you can then use a calculator to get this value rather quickly, and you'll again get 72. Okay. Another way is you can write six tenths as a fraction. As a fraction, zero point six is simply six in tenths place. So naturally, as a fraction, we can write that as six tenths times one twenty. And this is a good reviewing, uh, a good review of multiplying fractions. We can do six times one twenty. That's a big number. Let's divide first. One twenty divided divided, because a fraction just means a division, divided by 10, 120 divided by 10, simplifies to simply 12, right, over 1, but the 1 is redundant, and so what we're left with is 6 times 12, which again gives a value of 72. So three different strategies to get the value, but again, using a number line, I think kind of like gives you a nice range of answers you might be looking for, so you know your answer makes sense when you do find it in the end, okay? Now, for example two, we're going to do kind of the opposite um, direction. If I tell you that 72 is 40% of x, some number x, then what is the value of x? So again, we're going to start off on our line with zero. Now, 40% of x is 72. Now, this would be 50% in the middle. So 40%, let's say, lies around this part. Okay? And then 40% of x, and so that means that the value in the end is x, full x. Okay? So We'll have 40% here, and then finally we have x, or if you'd rather, 100% of x, right? That's the same thing. And so now we know that 40% um, of x is in fact 72, okay? So this is equal to 72. Right here we have 72, and that's less than half, okay? 
So that means that the full x is going to be more than double because 72 is not even 50%. It's not even halfway there, right? It's not even 50% of x. So 72 is not even half of x. That means x has to be more than double 72, right? x is going to be bigger than 72 times 2, which in fact is 144. Okay, so now we have some constraints on our values of x. We know that x has to be greater than 144, okay? And so now we can use a very similar strategy. I'm going to convert to a decimal. I think that's the best way to go about this one. I'm going to convert 40% to a decimal. Convert 40% to a decimal. And so we know that 40% as a decimal is 0 0.4, right? And now paying attention to the language, when we have 60% of 120, we multiply 0 0.6 by 120 because we had 60% of 120, of signaled us to multiply. Here we have 72 is 40% of X. Again, the word of signals us to multiply. Here we have 60% of 120, and so we multiply the decimal for 60% by 120. Here we have 40% um, of x, and so we're going to multiply the decimal for 40%, 0 0.4. We're going to multiply it by x. Here's where the dot comes into play, because we don't want to use a multiplication symbol that looks a lot like the x. And so I'm going to write 0 0.4 dot x. That means multiplication. I'll make a note of that in case that slips your mind. That's multiplication. We have 0 0.4 times x, and we know that that is 72. And so now we have an equation established, right? We have a nice equation established. We have 0 0.4 times x. That is to say, 0 0.4 times something is 72. Now, this is just a type 1 algebraic equation. If we want to solve for the value of x, this value here, we just want to get rid of the time 0.4 to get rid of an operation using algebra. We always think of the inverse operation. So what's the inverse of multiplying by 0 0.4? Well, clearly that's dividing by 0 0.4. And algebra always means we do the same thing on both sides of the equal sign. And so we divide also 72 by 0 0.4. That's going to make the 0 0.4s cancel out because x is being multiplied and divided by 0 0.4, the inverse operations cancel each other out. And so now we are left with x is equal to 72 divided by 0 0.4. And you can use a calculator if you like, but we get the value x is equal to 1. And so now popping that back onto our number line, does that make sense with the information we have right now? Well, we get 40% was less than half, that's 72. So that let us find that x was going to be greater than 144, and 180 certainly does fit the bill. And so, again, I hope this provides a nice visual of these problems um, involving percentages. I know percentages can be a little tricky, can be a, a little bit abstract when the numbers get messy enough, get murky enough. And so I hope um, these number lines kind of um, help build a visual in your head. If you have any comments, suggestions, please let me know. Any requests for future videos are always appreciated, and thanks for watching.